what's good with it? It's your boy, Simon Phoenix. This is Shots Fire Podcast. What up? What up? What up? Shoot your shot. Gun Rules Finest Podcast. That's right. Shots Fire. Bang. Yo, what's good with it? It's your boy, Simon Phoenix, Shots Fire Podcast. And today's guest is DJ Ill One. What's good with it? What's going on? What's going on? I can't call it, man. I can't call it. Let me, let me give you flowers. Make sure you, you know, you, you're loved. Make sure you're loved. Third rail's in the building, so if you hear me cuss at somebody or throw something, you, you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to let it be known. All right. So you know how we do this. I got some questions to ask, some yeah. things to discuss with, I would say, one of Gunroot's finest producers, DJs, all around. Hey, if it's got something to do with turntables, you the man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Hey, man, I'm trying to give you flowers, man. I'll you take them. I'll take them. Take the flowers. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take them. Jeez, if I get one more modest guest on here, it's going to be a problem. All right. So, I got some questions to ask. All right, shoot. Because I'm nosy. Okay. So, I, you know, we've been celebrating this 50th year of hip-hop thing, right? Yeah. And we have been discussing great rappers, great rapper groups, uh, who the hottest MC, who ran their coast, who ran their era, the whole nine. Now, in this city, we had a show, seemed to be a who's who of Grand Rapids MCs. You were a participant, not as an MC, but from a DJ point of view. Yeah. How do you think the show went from your viewpoint, your visuals of it? I think the show went good. I think it was good. I think everybody that came, they, they showed out. You know, it was good performances. Uh, shout out my man Six Man for putting on a, a a good show. Definitely, I think it was a good show. Okay, yeah. okay. So, being that was a good show, we was talking about shows. Let's slide off into the big boy show. Okay. So we had the big boy show as well, right around that tank, same little time where we had Fifty come out, the who's who's of rappers, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. You know. So, what'd you think about that? I liked it. It was like eight hours long. I mean, so I was streaming it in I was in small doses. Yeah, I was about to say you had to take yeah. it. You had to take it a piece. Yeah. I don't know who or what y'all decided to do that long. Y'all was y'all y'all was doing too much. Yeah. This was like Vince McMahon when he wanted to have WrestleMania in three different places. Oh my goodness! Y'all was doing too much. Yeah. Or or when it went, uh, it was like four hours. Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 Sitting there watching it with my son. I'm I'm almost I'm dead sleep almost. And he's up watching all four hours. I, I couldn't do it. But the uh fifty um anniversary that was in uh Yankee Stadium, it was it was dope. Um like I said, I had to watch in those in, in small parts, but it's still up on YouTube. You can watch it all if you want to. Uh but the funny thing is, you know, it, it couldn't it couldn't have everybody because it would have been like a, a three day thing, and still would have missed, you know, somebody, some, somebody, right? Yeah, somebody wouldn't make it. Well, yeah, it was it was dope though. I liked it. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was ungodly long, so I think I probably caught like three hours, but I did enjoy it. I did watch a lot of snippets of it. Yeah, I thought it was fire. I did. I thought it was real fire. Um, anything that you could think of that that stands out to you for the 50th mm. uh right now what it comes to mind is it was fat joe when he was out there you know he had, oh, he took, he had, he had no shirt on yeah you? you know he lost some weight and stuff wanted to show that but you know he was showing out for his borough for the bronx i'm, you know. I'm looking at the camera y'all know what i'm thinking y'all know what i'm <laughs> thinking I'm, I'm i'm dusty let's just say i'm dusty y'all know when i say i'm dusty, that mean i'm, I'm having a problem I'm thinking dirtbag shit yeah. um I'm just gonna say this. Let's, let's let's do this. Hey, Fat Joe, I call. I smell bullshit. That's what I'm saying. I smell <laughs> bullshit, lies and deceit. I love the guy. One of my favorite MCs. Um, I was fucking with him since Flojo. So this is no hater shit. Hey, my G, 
You should have kept a shirt on. That's all I'm saying. You should have kept a shirt on, bro. There's man titties everywhere. Man titties everywhere, bro. I'm glad that God is getting in shape, but there's man titties everywhere. I did not want to see that whatsoever. It was crazy. It was crazy, but it was a dope show. Uh, so that's what stood out to you, though? That was the one? Pretty, pretty much. Okay. Like, at what comes to mind right now, I'm like, oh, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I know you got a project. And then you got another project. So it's crazy saying that to a person that does beats, right. right? So you have a project that's on Spotify and all major ways to stream music. I hate saying that because it sounds so crazy. Every major way, and then you just run off this list of places that you could go and people music is there. That's how I know I'm old. That shit is so crazy to me. So you have, what is it, two projects or three? I got two right now. Um, the first one is an EP called Le- Love Letter to My City. Uh, I put that one out. Uh, they, I, they both came out in the same year, but I put, the, I put that one out because I had, you know, I, was, I had a collection of beats. I was like, huh. And I kind of rushed it out. If you listen to it, the, the sonics of it is, like, uh, uneven and stuff. But then later on that year which was last year, I put out Grooves, which was a full length. And it sounds better than that one. But, you know, uh, I didn't think that I would put two out in one year. That That's crazy for me. I thought I'd put out one, let that rock, then work on another one. You know, like the, what you normally do. But I put two out, and I'm proud of both of them. And um, I got another one I'm working on called Next Chapter, which... It went, it went through kind of a metamorphosis because it was starting out to be one thing, but then uh, as I was going, it ended up being something else. So hopefully I get it out this year. If not, it'll be next year because um, I'm working on this one, like everything from the Sonics and everything, how it's, uh, how it's put together. So I'm working on that closely. You know. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I love to hear when y'all tell me y'all in the kitchen cooking. You know what I'm saying? It made me feel like a fat boy. We walk in the house and it smells like your mama frying that chicken. You know she about to get that real gravy going. She she got that little she got that little thing right here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That little thing right here. Yeah, cause hey hey, Tharrell over there doing the. Yeah. I think a Gucci bag when I think that in the kitchen <laughs> mixing it, whipping it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my boy K. Yeah, I, I think that. Yeah. So I love to hear when y'all tell me y'all in the kitchen cooking. You don't understand, man. That make me smile. So let me ask you some more dirtbag questions, right? All right. Let's- now I got a list. Uh, I told my homeboys I'm still in this. I'm letting it be known I'm still in this. So every time y'all hear me say I stole this, you can't say I didn't say I stole this. I stole it. <laughs> Hey, Nori be asking everybody the, the questions. I'm still in that. I love that concept. I like to watch people squirm. So I'm doing that too. I'm still in it. Now, I'm let y'all know, I fight DJ enough. Um, I'm let y'all know. He looked like he's soft. I think I could take him. I don't want nothing to do with Nori. Nori looked like he'll jump out of a tree on a nigga. I don't want no problems. <laughs> oh, well, see, me and Nori on the same thing. Then I shoot first and ask questions later. But I just didn't want to say that live. Third say he was a shooter. So that means I don't want to mess. That. Again, that's a good reason not to mess with Nori. But DJ enough, I trip him. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all, I don't want nobody to say wow. that I'm soft. I trip DJ enough. I'm just letting it be known. Take that how you want to take it. I told I told everybody I was bogus this year. I'm being bogus all this year. All right, we're gonna go through them fast, but they all they all slightly bogus. Okay. But I asked two other people these questions, so your answer is whatever your answer is. Right. You, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right, number one. No ID or DJ Premier? DJ Premier. Jazzy Fizzle or Little John? I'm going with Little John. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I picked DJ Premier and I'm going Jazzy Fizzle. I totally understand your Little John. Little John got hits by his by hits. It don't need to be argued. DJ Run or Play from Kid and Play? DJ Run. Oh my that, goodness. That's my dirt bag when I threw that in there. I'm waiting for somebody to say play so I can tell them they gotta go home. All right. Um Big Daddy Kane or Coogee Rap. Ooh, see, I I gotta go with Kane. 
I gotta go with Kane, even though Kooji rap, Kooji rap ushered in a, a, a new style. You know, it, that was picked up by Big Pun later on and stuff like that. And he's he's a legend, but I'm going with Big, Big Daddy Kane because Big Daddy Kane had the total package. I, I ain't, bro. You ain't your answer is good with me. Either one of those would be a perfect answer. Third Real having a heart attack over there because he wants to scream out Kooji rap so bad. No. Peace. <laughs> both, yeah. <laughs> both of them. You know I, I you, hey, you, hey, look up. You know first from everything, mm. man. Come on. Right. I took a I took a drink for you. Because that's what happened when you had to do both of them. I took a drink for you. Okay. Ice Cube or Ice Tea? Ooh, I would say Ice Cube because his storytelling. Oh, okay. I mean, he made he no, made movies. You ain't got to... Hey, man, you don't have to explain yeah, to but, me. Well, Ice-T did too, but... Ice-T, Ice-T's done everything. Yeah, but Q... He was a dog in a movie. And when I say he made movies, I'm not talking about them literally making movies. I'm talking about the songs. Like, Death Certificate... No, I know what you're saying. Death Certificate I, is one of the best albums in hip-hop. Not period. shocked at all. Not shocked at all. Period. Uh, corrupt... Or Method Man. The reason Ooh. you get that one is because I seen that one online. I, I took offense to it. So, so I, yeah. So I'm I'm just asking, and then I'll say my piece after you get your answer. You know what? Um, popularity would say Method Man over Corrupt, but um, and, and and see, this one's a hard one because Meth has gotten better. Mm -hmm. He but, started out dope, but got better, and Corrupt. Is one of them cats that you will not want to see in a battle because he will freestyle from morning to night. Well, won't, won't let up and, and will a, kill you. A monster. I, my answer always has to be meth. My my stance is this. Meth is everything corrupt is times two. Mm. And and that for me is enough. Meth meth from a solo MC stands out. Meth as a partner in crime stands out. Meth stands out when he's in his own group. Mm -hmm. Meth has never given us a whack album. It might not have been in your taste, but Meth has always shown you that he got at least three of them on every album. Consistency. And Across consistent. The board. And and that's why. And I always tell people this about corrupt. Corrupt show is a cheat show. And I said this to the last person on the show, so I'm a I'm a stay on brand. Corrupt is cheating because he's from Philly. If you took any East Coast rapper and put him in the West Coast in the '90s, he would shine based off the skill set. But you put a Philly rapper over there, based off the skill set, you cheating, you cheating, and you and you rhyme, rapping with corrupt, you cheating. Corrupt got the slowest flow in the universe, and you over there like. You mean the con yeah. But his flow but his flow gets intricate. I think yeah. that's where that's where he Yeah. No, no. Well, yeah. I'm not saying that yeah. it's just speed flow, but I'm yeah. saying like you're sitting next to a nigga that's like four in the morning now at my dope. And then you come in rapping like East Coast niggas rap. Right. You're going to stand out. That's what I'm saying. That's why I say corrupts is, is a little more cheatery. Okay, I'll give you that. Um so let's 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 discuss some other shit. Let's let's get gangster. Right. Let's get gangster. I like to ask. I like to ask producers fucked up questions. <laughs> I always got like two in my pocket just for emergencies. So my fucked up question to you is: Would you rather be trapped in the studio, Paisley Park with Prince, or would you want to be trapped in the studio with Rakim? Hmm. Wow. I Each one a different challenge. That's why I use Rakim. I would I would say Prince. Woo! Because you a bad man. Because I if if Prince is if he's working with me, I'm going to pull him into my world. But also the man plays he played 27 instruments. Bro, you ain't got it to the So what what I mean, I can learn from him as well. Now, Rakim, you know, he's an MC's MC. I don't, you know, so my working with him, I would try to bring out the best of him in him. Or that. But Prince, I think it would be a learning experience as well. As, so I would have to go with Prince. Okay. And that, that's okay. like once in a lifetime. Okay. I ask that because Prince is a lot of people's musical dream, right? Yes. Uh, from a musical level, just as you stated, play so many instruments, writes, can sing in all the keys. Right. Um. 
and has the ability to bring out the musical greatness in others. Oh, yeah. He's made a lot of people stars around him. And very few artists can say they've done that. And he is the architect of a sound. Yes. Like, we talk about the Minneapolis sound. You know what I mean? That's like that's a deep thing. And then you say, well, Prince is the head of that. And then you go to Jimmy Jam and Terry Jimmy Lewis. Lewis exactly. and, and then it just trickles down from there. Yeah. So I totally understand the Prince thing. I use Rakim because Rakim is the egg that has no one else has cracked yet. And so I often wonder if I put $30 million in DJ Premier hand, if I put $30 million in Timberland hand, if I put $30 million in Dre's hand, you trapped. You got six months. It's the God. He got everything he need. I gave him $30 million. There's no argument. Do whatever he say do. Do your best. Well, we'll take Dre out of that because they we, we I know that. They've done that. But I feel like... have heard nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I feel like Dre's was more... He's a perfectionist and it's more of his way and not the other way and so therefore the same thing kind of with Buster. Mm, like yeah, a lot of people definitely. never bring that up. Right, right. Dre was out there with Buster, we got nothing. Yeah, he, I mean the big bang was and he did a little here a little there but, but yeah. Yeah, they were supposed to be one on one. Yeah. And nothing came No. Yeah. So I would say like that Dre would be a bad person, but anyone else that you could think of, you know, could you trap the god with them and you Padded everybody pocket. Everybody good. There, there's no discussion about I'm going to be broke. You ain't even got to think about it. Right. They just in there to work. Could you produce something with him? Or was it really just a time capsule? The greatest mm. MC had a time capsule and he gave us what he needed to give us. And it'll never be recreated. I find it to be the most interesting because he's so dope. And even when he came back out with that, with, I want to say it's the 18th letter. 18th letter. And I love that project, right? Yeah. But I felt like it was more. I felt right. like, and I, and I understood as a person listening that he had caught up. Or, or should I say, rap had caught up to him. Where he was, rap had finally got to where he was. Right. But I felt like he, to me, he's like Goku. I know there's another, another, another level in there. Yeah. And I feel like somebody could bring it out. Right. But like, and you, like you said, the, the 18th letter, and then it was an album after that. And he's worked with lesser people. Not saying that, mm -hmm. you know. But he's he's been with Dre and all that. But he's worked with lesser people and put out stuff. So mm -hmm. it's possible. It's just, I mean, I, I guess you, like you said, it had to be the frame of mind that he's in, right? You know, because we like, you know, because when we said when he said Drake, man, please, we thought, oh, we about to hear some heat. Nothing on the screen. <laughs> I'm asking how much time I got. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. I got one thing left. Okay. Out of making beats, right? Mm -hmm. What is the most satisfying thing for you? Is is it the making of the beat or is it the making of a complete song or is it just the idea of making it? Like going through the process is way more entertaining than actually the finished thing. Or is the finished thing the thing, you know. Well, yeah, the idea is the thing that jabs at you. It, it jabs at you, jabs at you, because you, the idea will come to you, and then if you can't let that idea go, because being a uh, being a producer, creative, you forget a lot of dope shit. Like you, uh, idea will come to you, it'll be dope, and you think about it, then all of a sudden it's gone. But there's certain things that keep jabbing at you, keep jabbing at you. Got to do it. It, it. You got to do it. Just to see how, that's that's the beginning of it. But then when you make it happen, that's the most satisfying part for me. Like, okay, so I, I got this sample or this melody and I put this drum to it and that's the beginning of it. And it sounds dope already. I don't have to do nothing else, but I know I'm going to do some more and make it complete. That That's where I get satisfied to that point. And then I go and finish it. But... In the beginning, that it, it 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 jabs at you, just keeps picking at you. If it's an idea that you can't let go, you gotta get it out. So, okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. I'm always curious what what drives the rest of y'all. Like, I, like, 
from my point of view, I know it drives me and your description is very similar. Yeah. What I have is I have lines pop up in my head, right? Yeah. Or my inner monologue voice will start rapping. And that will make me be like, oh, I need to I need to write that down. Right. Even if okay. I'm not gonna ever use it, I just need yeah. to write that down. I need to put that somewhere. So I always wonder like, do producers have that problem? Like oh, when yeah. you walk in and you just like, I hear a snare. Yeah. I need to oh, yeah. I need All to find the, this goddamn snare. Like I remember uh this uh, seeing an interview with Miles Davis. He's like, um, I always have an idea in my head. And the, the uh, interviewer asked him, you got one right now? I said, yeah, you all, you always have an idea. I could be at the mall in JCPenney's or something, song over the thing. And if it sound dope, I'm like, oh, man, that sound kind of dope. I'll, I'll flip that. You know, it's always something that that that's on your mind, like mm -hmm. some idea, some melody, something, always something. It, it, it's uh, it's. It never ends. It's, it's constant for me. Okay. So let me ask you this, so then we're going to get you out of here. Do you have anything that's coming out of Pipeline? Ooh, anything yeah. that we can look forward to? Any yep. project? Any something you... In the kitchen cooking. Okay. Um, right now, I'm on my DJ stuff, and I got two things coming out. I got an Ill Out Radio series that I've been working on periodically. I'm putting on an, uh, another one for this month. But then I'm working on a mixtape. It's called If Love Was a Mixtape, which is pretty much just a mixtape with just love songs and stuff. Ooh. You know, happy love songs and, and things of that nature. It's, it's, all, it's all about the, the good parts of love. It's not going to be, you know, the... You ain't going to take me over my baby daddy slapped me in the face nah, and pushed me down the stairs. Nah, it's, no, it's, none it's, of that music. It's going to be It's going to be old. And current and maybe some new, but it's all gonna be love is the focus. So you know, it's not it's not on the hip hop side, but that just I'm just showing my um, your range. My, yeah, my range. I can go across the board. I can, you know. And then um, of course I'm still working on next chapter, but also working on a, a Grand Rapids producer compilation. And I've got some of the well, I pretty much got the city's dopest producers. On it, they've been sending me stuff, so I just gotta put it together. You gonna let me get on the beatbox? Oh, it's not. It's it's, it's pretty much done. Like what, what they got what, to do with me getting on in the beatboxing? Oh, you get on there and beatboxing. Yeah. No, I would say that for something. Uh huh. Else. No. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm man, damn. I'm just trying to get it. Y'all yeah, some haters. So, so y'all that, too. That's what I'm, I'm working on. Then um, uh, also another one called Sunday uh, Jazz Sessions, which I. I I was Ooh. doing on Facebook where every Sunday I would pick a jazz album that I was listening to and I would post it. Well, now I'm going to I'm gonna make a, a mix with that. I'm doing, so it's me working when I'm not working. So I'm putting out mixes and stuff, you know, just to keep keep it going. Okay. You okay. Know. That's what we want. We need you to keep it going. Yeah. We need shit to listen to. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it is. That's your damn job. You're a DJ. What the fuck? Right. How you get DJs to be like, I'm trying to keep it going? That's your job. Your whole job in life is to keep the party going, sir. Well, you, well, you know, nowadays, it's um, marketing yourself and things, it goes in different ways. So, you know, you're not getting too many mixtapes anymore. No, that's yeah. because y'all are digitally out here doing yeah. what y'all do. You get playlists, which are cool, but... It ain't the same. It ain't the same, because well, I you, like to... You're like, missing a douchebag in it. Yeah. Let's be honest. You're missing... There's no mix. There's no random dude like me. Hey, hey man. Yeah. It's DJ 7835. You're listening to the hottest mix CD in the city. Motherfucker. Yeah, you, so you don't I, get none of that. Yeah, it's easy to do a playlist, because any one of us can do a playlist. I mean, my but, playlist is fire. I want to do I want to do mixtapes that, that tell stories. Twerking in the morning is a fire mixtape. <laughs> Holla at your boy You know you want that Wait did you hear the uh, Well the playlist uh, um, Montgomery Alabama playlist There's one on Spotify And one on Apple I gotta check it out now Oh yeah you, it, it fits It fits Every song fits Oh yes. that's what I'm talking about I like that I Yeah like that. definitely Yeah so Alright man I'm glad that you Been putting in the work Glad you're doing your thing um, I really don't got no more dirt break. I mean I literally could sit, to sit And talk for another hour We could go on to the other shit yeah. Because that's how I do But I, I'm gonna let you go Because I need you to come back Okay. I'm, I might need you to be my Aaron Spears, you know. <laughs> you know how Vlad do. He just he just milked the hell out of guests. I'm about oh, yeah. to start milking the hell out of my guests. These, yeah, yeah, yeah. these niggas gonna be in backpacks. They just gonna pop up everywhere. Like oh, damn, so I gotta I gotta be the yo. That's garbage. It's <laughs> whack. It's trash. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thurrell didn't want to act right. I was trying to get Thurrell to be that. Uh, so I, he could just sit in the chair and talk crazy. He didn't want to do it. I was like, damn, bro, I'm carrying all the weight. I'm the only person on the film. All they see is me. Gabbage. <laughs> yeah, Gabbage. Yeah, all right. So, all right, DJ L1. I, as usual, appreciate everything that you do in hip hop. I appreciate that you that you are here. I appreciate that you have always been willing to be my guest. So, I give you my roses. Yeah, my roses. I'm grabbing my roses. I'm handing them to your ass because I appreciate you because you that kind of motherfucker. And I will accept that. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, bro, the, the door always open for you, bro. I'm tired of telling y'all little ugly dudes. Email me. I'll interview anybody. I was going to let Kamal come on the show. That's him. And tell me how to cook rice. <laughs> I know how to cook rice, but I still was going to let you come on the show and do that because you know what? I like talking shit. Next week, I'm going to have my deep voice friend Cavante come on and tell you how to pick up women. He only getting them because his voice sounds like, hey, baby, my name is Cavante and I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if y'all could only see the death stare that's going on. I wish I could push my camera around so y'all could see. Somebody walked to the room and was like, don't ever make him sound sexy again. I'll kill you and him too. So, look, I ain't never making no more jokes about him. He can't get no more jokes. I don't want to die. She got guns all around her. <laughs> all right, DJ O1, I appreciate you coming on the show, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I had to have as much fun as possible because yeah. you guys are rare. <laughs> all right, this has been Shots Fire Podcast. I've been your boy, Simon Phoenix, for Third Rail, for DJ L1. Thank you again. We'll holla. Holla at your boy. I'm gone.